Police investigating a deadly shooting at a motel. How motel guests are describing the moments before officers arrived. And a new detail in a different shooting investigation after a man was shot at multiple times. What police are sharing with us this noon. And we've hit a nice stretch of weather here, but will we see some rain in the forecast? We're going to talk about it coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police have linked three shooting victims to one Southside motel. And for one man, it was a fatal shooting. Police believe all the victims were at the same motel room in the 1300 block of Roosevelt when the bullets started flying early this morning. But as Katrina Weber tells us, officers found them all at other locations. Police cars outside mean trouble inside a room at the Everclean Motel. Based on shell casings and other evidence in the 1300 block of Roosevelt, officers could tell someone had been shot. I just heard boom, 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 and I just went in the restroom. I was like, get that. We heard about probably about eight shots or something like that. And then it stopped for a while, and everybody starts looking out. And then a few minutes later, they came back. Both those women knew just from the sound around 2.30 this morning that this couldn't be good. Police say two men later showed up at a downtown hospital, one dead from gunshot wounds and the other shot in his hand. Victims from the motel. Police only found out what happened here after they found a man at that gas station. He told them he ran there after someone started shooting at him at that same motel room. They learned that man also had been shot in his hip. He says the shooter chased him, catching him in the parking lot. Once investigators heard more of a story, it led them to the motel. That crime scene would keep them busy for hours and have them suiting up for safety. It just affects the hotel and then we have kids that stay here and it allows them not to be able to come outside. Along with what they collected from inside the room, police took a man in for questioning. Someone who they believe has ties to the shooting. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And new details this noon as police continue looking for at least one person involved in a shooting on the east side. Police say the victim was shot at least 20 times. According to the officer last night, the victim was parked in front of a house in the 5000 block of Hershey Drive. That's not too far from Rigsby and Loop 410. Just before 6 p.m., a driver pulled up to him and someone inside that vehicle fired at least 20 times. And the victim, the victim was hit three times and taken to the hospital. He should be okay and was expected to, re to be released from the hospital sometime last night. He told officers he didn't know who shot him. Police say they think two to three people may be involved and so far no one has been arrested. However, any potential suspects could face aggravated assault with deadly weapon charges. And staying on the east side, police also investigating a deadly shooting. Officers say 36 year old man was shot and killed inside a home around 2.30 this morning. This was in the 500 block of Dory Street. That's near Martin Luther King Drive. Police tell us there was a disturbance inside the home. It went out into the street, and that's when SAPD says the victim was shot in the head. At the time, police took six people in for questioning. It's not clear if anyone is facing charges. And on the city's north side, a five vehicle crash ends with two people in the hospital and another behind bars. It happened on southbound 281 between Thousand Oaks and Brook Hollow around 1030 last night. Police tell us the chain reaction event started after a driver in a red car rear ended a driver in a black car. Several lanes of traffic were closed in the area as a result. And at the scene, police told us one man was taken to jail on suspicion of DWI. Two people were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. New unemployment numbers are out today. Jobless claims dropped from the previous week, but they are still remaining very high. Hundreds of thousands of Americans continue struggling to make ends meet. As ABC's Rena Roy explains, some blaming Congress for not coming to a bipartisan agreement on another coronavirus stimulus relief bill. The U.S. is now in its 28th straight week of historically high jobless claims. 837,000 Americans applying for unemployment benefits last week alone. Today, more than 40,000 airline workers woke up without a job, furloughed or laid off after federal funding ran out at midnight. What do you do when you lose your dream job? Where do you go from there? Back in March, airlines received $25 billion from the U.S. government. Now they're asking for 
$25 billion more, but Congress is in a months-long stalemate, failing to come to an agreement on another bipartisan coronavirus stimulus relief bill after the last one expired in July. Some small airports won't have any commercial flights at all. American alone is canceling flights to at least 11 U.S. cities. There's going to be significant reductions in service that are going to affect so many communities. The new stimulus bill would also help restore the $600 federal unemployment benefits and extend the Paycheck Protection Program to help small businesses like restaurants. Their priorities are on partisanship, mm. and it's a disgrace. The cruise industry also hit hard. The months-long no-sale order for cruise ships was set to expire Wednesday, but is now extended until October 31st. You have a significant density of people in a confined space and unclear how optimal the ventilation is, and that's a recipe for COVID-19 spread. According to the website Axios, CDC Director Robert Redfield had pushed to extend the order until February of next year, but that plan was allegedly blocked by Vice President Mike Pence. The White House, however, saying that the coronavirus task force is following the data and the science, Axios reports. House Democrats initially planned to vote on their $2.2 trillion stimulus bill on Wednesday, but pushed it to today. The bill is expected to pass in the lower chamber, but not in the Republican-controlled Senate because of the high price tag. Airlines say they will recall their workers if Congress reaches an agreement. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. We've got the latest coronavirus numbers for you back here at home. The seven-day average for cases once again on the rise. We now stand at 178. We did have one new death reported yesterday. However, we've seen a decrease in hospitalizations. 212 COVID-19 patients remain hospitalized. 81 are in the intensive care unit, and only 30 are on ventilators. And according to a new Bearfax case at San Antonio report poll, roughly three out of four Bear County parents say distance learning has improved since the first attempt last spring. 72% of respondents think school districts are doing either a much better job during this round of virtual learning. Meanwhile, 63% of respondents believe school districts have done a good job ensuring students have equal access to the internet. Other findings in the Bear Facts poll showed 75% of families feel well prepared to support children in distance learning, but 39% feel like their child has fallen behind academically within the past five months. You can read more about the latest report right now on KSAT.com. As you would figure, a lot of celebrities showed up for game one of the NBA Finals, albeit virtually. Larry Mayer is with more on the Lakers start last night. And there's a new coffee spot in town. A local church in Southtown aims to change the culture of coffee by sharing the culture of families in San Antonio seeking asylum. We have that story coming up. Diversity is brewing in Southtown. Cafe Cotidiano is celebrating its first week in business to help families in San Antonio seeking asylum. This coffee bakery trailer is located in the parking lot of the San Antonio Mennonite Church. That's on the 1400 block of South St. Mary Street. Pastor Katie Bess Richmond says their church has seen an influx of asylum seekers who need housing support and of course, this during their long journeys and wanted to create a business that can support the families and put a spotlight on the diverse cultures. Customers can enjoy dulce de leche lattes, Mexican mochas, and even baked goods, including their popular rum cake prepared by and served by volunteers and even asylum seekers. And we always want to try and position them as the teachers and kind of be in the place where we get to receive and where we get to learn from them. And so we're hoping to kind of be able to empower all of these families, um, be able to do job training and help spark their imagination of all the amazing things that they can do in our community and the different ways they can be a part of our community. The full story is on KSAT.com. Cafe Cotidiano is open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. It is donation based, so all those proceeds will help families seeking asylum cover housing expenses, including food, transportation and even legal counsel. And we are once again coming together with our KSAT community partners this time to help support young people in our area through SA Youth's annual fundraiser Chips and Salsa. 
-hmm. The virtual event happening tomorrow night from 7 to 8.30. Our own Mike Osterhage and his wife Bonnie will both be a part of the night. The nonprofit hopes to raise $150,000 for San Antonio's high-risk youth and young adults from highly distressed neighborhoods across the city. You can purchase tickets right now on ksaccommunity.com. The event is billed as a streaming speakeasy. Along with your ticket, you'll get a party pack full of goodies that will enhance the virtual experience. Outside with live cam. Woohoo! If it doesn't end, it would be great, but we know it's probably going to come to an end. This weather has been outstanding over the last couple of days. We know, David, looking at the seven day forecast. I don't know. We got like another week of this going. I think it's it's looking really good. We do have some stuff in the Gulf of Mexico we got to talk about and then we'll take a look at the drop monitor coming up here in just a bit too. The aquifer down about half a foot. It's at 662 point, uh, well, 662 even, so not in bad shape. And looking at the pond count. Looks good today. Mold and ragweed both in the low category. We've got your forecast coming up. And welcome back. Yes, Jeff. Alicia, this could last a week, maybe even longer. I was so excited. It's been so great in the mornings and then makes me want to stay up later in the evenings. Justin, mm -hmm. good puts, news? You, puts you in a good mood. Yeah. It really does. Uh, one thing we have been watching, though, are the butterflies. Yeah, maybe well, you've seen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah watching them smack the windshield. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Not good for them, right? No. Uh, it's good for the car washes, though. Uh, the <laughs> car gets pretty messed up these days with these butterflies coming through. It, it's not really a migration. We see this every year. They kind of come out in swarms. They like the hackberry bush, and it's around this time of year that we typically see them, but they can get fairly concentrated here in late September, or early October, and that's what we're dealing with right now. So if you've seen them, that, that is uh, why they're out and about. Also, we got to talk a little bit about the smoke in the atmosphere. This is newly updated. So we've had quite a few fires up here across parts of Colorado and Wyoming. Smoke in the atmosphere is getting pushed south. We're starting to see some of that here in South Texas. It's not in the low levels of the atmosphere, so it's not going to cause any health problems or anything like that. But you may notice a little bit of a haze in the higher part of the atmosphere, and that's because some of that smoke is blowing down the plains here into Texas. Bit of a heads up there. Of course, it's been a terrible fire season out west, and that includes there in the Rocky Mountains and, of course, out towards California. You look at the visible satellite picture right now, things are really pretty clear. We continue to see a lot of sun. We haven't seen any clouds for several days now, and we don't expect that we'll see much uh, even as we go into the weekend, uh, other than, again, some of that uh, haze from the smoke. You see some showers up here across the Great Lakes, but that really is it. I mean, this is a really quiet weather pattern for the country. There is just not a whole lot going on. And look at the sunrise this morning. Uh, it was gorgeous. We started off in the 50s and 40s, and now we're already up to 81. So like yesterday, we're going to see a big swing in temperatures. 81 degrees at the airport. Westerly winds at about 6 miles per hour as it stands right now. 79 Bernie State, 77 Canyon Lake, 83 in New Braunfels. We're at 82 in Tarpley, 80 in Gonzales. Still 79 in Kennedy and 77 out in Rock Springs. Here's what you can expect for high temperatures today. Somewhere up close to 90 here in town and upper 80s, uh, probably in the hill country. Dew points are on the low end. We're still talking about 50s here. Now, these have come up some, but I still think we're in the pleasant category. You'll notice we're starting to see a few 60s here, a little bit closer to the coast. Eh, so you may start to feel a little bit down there, but we'll have a frontal boundary come through, and this will sweep out the humidity once again. So. Uh, humidity is not going to be a problem. There's that front I was talking about. It's a dry front, doesn't bring any rain with it. Temperatures today up around 90. And then over the weekend, uh, it does cool us down some. So tomorrow, mid 80s, and then probably upper 80s, both Saturday and Sunday. And we'll get another sort of reinforcing shot on Sunday, too. This front does not bring any rain either, and we certainly could use some. Very quickly, we got to touch on the tropics. We've got a system down here that's looking a little bit better. Deep convection here with this tropical wave. And Hurricane Center gives us about a 70% chance of development over the next five days. It is moving towards the Gulf of Mexico. Normally, that would be of cons concern for us. But looking at the models, by the time it makes it up here, a lot of that moisture gets pushed either towards Florida or maybe into Mexico. So I really don't think it's going to be a problem for us going forward. We'll still watch it, of course. And there is another system out there that now the Hurricane Center is watching. 20% chance of development with this one over the next five days. That bears from watching too. Forecast for today, 85 by 2 o'clock will be up around 90 for a high. Temperatures slipping back down into the upper 70s by 8 o'clock. And 58 tomorrow morning, 85 on Friday. And then as we mentioned, upper 80s over the weekend, 
hot next week too during the afternoons, but the mornings are still nice in the 60s for the most part, guys. Thank you, Justin. And now for the birthday boy. <laughs> oh. Happy birthday, oh, Larry. Thank you. Thank, oh. <laughs> thank you. I think we'll just leave it right there. Just go ahead. Just do your thing. You want me to just do my thing? Not, yeah. That's All good. right. Well, hey, the Steelers and Titans game will be postponed even longer than what we originally thought because of COVID-19. Plus, Anthony Davis, well, he dominated the heat last night. I mean, look how serious that man is. Coming up. The job is not done, and we're not satisfied with winning one game. It's that simple. LeBron James and the Lakers reverse their early play to dominate the Heat in Game 1 of the NBA Finals and Big Board Sports. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL has postponed Sunday's Pittsburgh Steelers game at Tennessee until later in the season after one additional Titans player and one personal member tested positive for COVID-19. Today's announcement comes one day after the league said it hoped to play the game on Monday or Tuesday. Yesterday, we learned that four players and five team personnel members tested positive early in the week, pushing the number now to 11. Here's Titans head coach Mike Vrabel. I've heard heard crazy reports that, you know, somebody's to blame or this person or that person. You know that this is this is something that we're not we're not interested in trying to blame anybody. We want to make sure that that we're doing everything we can to make the players safe and you know that this doesn't uh, this doesn't happen again. Well, we were told during training camp that this could happen if you're not. Um, you know, if you're not diligent, you're not careful. And I don't know what's going on down there, so I'm not going to speak on them, but I'm telling you what we were told. And we were told that if um, there might be a situation that if you weren't careful and there was some COVID issues um, here in Pittsburgh, that we might not be able to practice till Friday or Saturday. It's why they had, they made the rule with more practice squad guys this year. The NFL said a new game date would be announced shortly. Game one of the NBA Finals went down last night between the Lakers and the Heat. Miami punched LA in the mouth early, taking a 13-point lead in the first quarter, 25-12. After that, the Lakers turned things around and led 31-28 after one. In the second quarter here, Danny Green goes three, one of 11 first-half three-pointers for the Lakers. And big man Anthony Davis was too tough to handle. Kyle Kuzma drives and finds the eyebrow for a slam dunk. Davis led all with 34 points and 10 rebounds. LeBron James had 25 points and 13 boards. The Lakers roll 116 to 98 in Davis NBA Finals debut. Uh, first time I, I'm uh, experiencing this, so you know, obviously you want to come out and play well and you want to come out and win. Um, it was a great experience for him, a great game one. Um, job's not done, you know, we have three more. Yeah, we have you know 48 hours uh, to figure out what the, the next plan of attack uh, will be. He was extremely good. Uh, tonight and we have to be better. Game two is tomorrow night at eight here on KSAT 12 and LA is favored by eight. All right, plenty of star power in the virtual stands for game one last night. You got Manu Ginobili, Clyde Drexler, Robin Roberts, Shaquille O'Neal, Barack Obama, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, Pau Gasol, James Worthy, big shot Rob, Robert Ory himself, Dwayne Wade, Bill Walton, John C. Billups, Chauncey Billups and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Look at all that. All we're missing is David Sears in there. Yeah, exactly. Shaq takes up the whole screen. <laughs> <laughs> and who was Manu Ginobili rooting for is what I want to know. I don't know. Yeah. Probably individual players because you know he's got team, <laughs> fan, uh, friends on both teams. Maybe Danny Green. Who knows? That is too cool. Maybe, yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, Larry. Thanks a lot. You got it. Hey, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, one of Larry's favorite wrestlers. He's working on a new project. This one about his life when Young Rock is set to premiere. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. The CDC silence no longer giving guidance on the pandemic. This comes as the death toll in the United States is more than 206,000 with hospitalizations on the rise in 24 states and daily deaths up in 12 states. The sudden rise in positive test rates could mean the negative consequences of cooler temperatures are taking hold sooner than researchers anticipated. This department is near capacity. As you can see, uh, looking around, uh, 
we have patients in most of these rooms. COVID is real. The CDC has rigorous systems in place to ensure that all scientific information it shares is both accurate and has been fully reviewed by experts. The first presidential debate now in the books. Next comes the vice presidential debate. It's going to be held at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City next week. However, the school is already preparing for the big event. Tents are set up to host an army of national media. Part of the campus is closed down and will be secured during the debate by the U.S. Secret Service. Police expecting to see some protesters. The university was selected to be the host of the debate a year ago. The pandemic has forced them to make some changes, but even with a socially distanced debate, the university hopes it will make an impression on those who watch. For a long time, you, the state of Utah has been a flyover state, and we're hoping that this will uh, change that perception. The debate will be divided into nine 10 minute segments. Pence and Harris will each have two minutes to respond. USA Today's Susan Page will be the moderator. The debate is scheduled to take place on October 7th. In the meantime, here in Texas, the Fifth Circuit of Appeals ruled straight ticket voting will not happen. This comes after a district judge tried to bring back the practice by blocking a Republican measure. Straight ticket voting allows people to choose one party's entire slate of candidates on a ballot instead of choosing each candidate individually. And don't forget, early voting is now less than two weeks away, and the deadline to register to vote is next Monday. That's October 5th. Right now on KSED.com, we have everything you need to know ahead of Election Day. For more information on candidates, you'll see on this ballot to links to help you get registered. You can find all the information you need in the Vote 2020 section of our website. If you can avoid those, what are they called? Snout nose? What? Snout nose? Snout nose. <laughs> Butterflies. <laughs> Butterflies. But snout, if you can avoid those, man, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. Just, I mean, just don't get in your car. You'll be all right. Yeah, it'll be all right. There's not too many of them, but they, they are around. And uh, it's gorgeous. I mean, you see it right there. We got clear skies, 81 degrees. This morning, we had the full moon, full harvest moon. This is a shot of it over uh, Landa Park there in New Braunfels. That's a great shot. Uh, you'll see it again tonight, but uh, just gorgeous conditions here around South Texas, and there's not a whole lot that changes here going forward. We're going to continue to see these clear skies uh, cloud free really for the next few days, and that'll keep those temperatures going from uh, cool mornings into the warm afternoons. Right now we're at 81 degrees here in San Antonio, 83 Houston, 80 in Waco, some 60s up in the Texas Panhandle. Uh, but nice across the entire Lone Star State. And our forecast today calls for temperatures to be up close to 90. We'll have an east southeasterly breeze at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We may see a little bit more humidity over the weekend, but rain stays out of the forecast and we need some. We're going to take a look at that drought monitor coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. And a famous, very, very famous country star is in a new Christmas movie on Netflix that's being released next month. What Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square is all about still ahead in the spotlight. And the Astros sweep the Twins and move to the next round of the MLB playoffs. Larry Mirror has got some highlights. Talk about that coming up in a few minutes. And Fury, furry family members can be a lot of fun and help you create priceless memories, but taking care of them can be pricey. That's leading some pet owners to buy pet insurance. Still ahead, how to choose the best plan for you and your pet. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Disney launching a new ad product called Disney Hulu XP. This will allow marketers to strike a single deal to display their ads across both platforms. Now, in the past, buyers had to come to Disney and Hulu separately, but now for the first time ever, the service will offer a one-stop shop for both streaming giants. The streaming service will make it so that users won't see repeated ads across both platforms. Meanwhile, Walmart is now getting a makeover as the retail giant working to redesign their stores, all in order to get people to download and use their app while shopping. As part of the push, stores will now be reorganized and will come equipped with new signage to encourage the digital integration. 
And the Biden campaign is rolling out a new Snapchat lens, encouraging users to go vote early, specifically in swing states. Biden is the first candidate to utilize Snapchat's marker feature. When the camera is flipped, users will be instructed to aim the camera at a USPS logo. And once the logo is scanned, a message will appear that reads, vote early for Biden Harris. According to the social media giant, about 80% of their users are voting age. And that's a Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Pachado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The rising cost of veterinary care has more and more pet owners opting for pet insurance, but the variety of plans can be confusing. And what's covered and not covered varies widely. On top of all that, the pet insurance plans can be expensive. Here's Max Massey with some tips to help you sort it all out. Taking care of your furry friends sometimes means dealing with unexpected costs. That's when pet insurance can come in handy. However, there are a lot of plans out there to sift through. Money Magazine recently outlined some tips to help pet owners choose. You'll need to decide just what type of plan to buy. Most choose a plan that covers illnesses and accidents, and some pet owners will add in wellness coverage as well. Be sure to research exactly what a plan covers because that can vary greatly. An example, many plans cover a genetic condition that can affect the hips of larger dogs, but some will put an age limit on the coverage or even deny coverage for an older dog. And many plans do not cover routine expenses such as vaccines or routine visits to the vet. But some insurers will extend coverage of those for an additional price. And there are policies that have a limit on how much will be reimbursed over the lifetime of your pet. Those limits range anywhere from $5,000 to $30,000. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Pre-existing conditions aren't covered in many cases, so check all the conditions specified in the coverage. And happening today, the Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino Hotel is reopening at 25% capacity. The casino has been closed since March due to COVID-19, but now it will have to abide by all safety precautions. Some of those include all guests and team members must wear their face mask. All guests and team members will be screened upon entry and the entire property will reopen as a non-smoking facility. You can read more about the precautions right now on KSAT.com. And HEB has been accused of shading El Paso in a new printing design on one of their company's soda cans. A Reddit user posted a photo of a can of HEB Original Cola, which shows the logo cutting off part of Texas. Far West Texas, including El Paso, is noticeably absent from the logo on the can. KSAT reached out to HEB for comment, and a spokesperson, Diacopo, said, quote, It is an unintentional printing error on the small size can only. Another Reddit user pointed out that there aren't any HEBs within 100 miles of El Paso. Hmm. Yeah. Not interesting, <laughs> huh? I didn't know there was no HEBs in El Paso. I didn't either. So there you go. We're lucky. That. So hey, <laughs> I do know it's a beautiful day outside at 81 degrees. Woo. And I know nice you can't find a cloud in the sky, that's for no. sure. It is clear. We've got uh, more sunny skies ahead, too. Temperatures today so far. 81. We started off at 54 this morning, so it was another great start. Averages are 86 and 64, so we'll be below average for the low temperature and probably above average for the high temperature. The record high is 97 set back in 1989. There are a few changes for the weekend. We'll talk about it coming up. My name is Borat. I journalist for Kazakhstan. Borat is back. Sasha Baron Cohen has made a sequel to his 2006 satirical documentary, Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. Cohen and company reportedly made the sequel on the sly, just as coronavirus filming restrictions were eased. Cohen's latest adventures, Meeting Real People While in Disguise, is set to premiere on Amazon Prime in late October. They've all got their opinions, but then what do they know? John said to me, I want to be an actor and create. Here's your first look at the new documentary, Belushi. Award-winning filmmaker R.J. Cutler retells the tale of the late, great John Belushi with the help of previously unheard audio tapes featuring the legendary performer's family, friends, and collaborators. Belushi debuts November 22nd on Showtime. Uh, 
Know That Voice, Andrea Bocelli, who performed from Milan for millions around the world at Easter, is coming out with more inspirational music. The iconic Italian tenor is joined on his new album, Believe, by opera singer Cecilia Bartoli and 27-time Grammy winner Alison Krauss. Believe is due out November 13th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. ACDC is making a comeback. The rock band announced on social media they will be reuniting. Angus Young, Phil Rudd, Stevie Young, Brian Johnson, and Cliff Williams were in the photo posted along with the caption, Are You Ready? The band's last album was Rock or Bust in 2014. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson announced his new comedy show is officially in production. Young Rock is set to premiere on NBC sometime in 2021. The show follows the actor's life from childhood to his college days of playing football at the University of Miami. Johnson revealed that Bradley Constant has been tapped to play him as a 15-year-old. And Uli Latukfu will play Johnson during his college years. And get ready for new Christmas content on Netflix. Next month, the streaming service is releasing a new Christmas movie starring Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square will be out November 22nd. The movie stars Christine Baronski as a rich, unpleasant woman who returns to her small town to evict everyone. But she has a change of heart thanks to the townspeople and Angel and Angel played by Parton. The musical future original songs by the country artist ahead of Netflix announcement. Parton released the song Christmas on the Square from her upcoming holiday album, A Holly Dolly Christmas. That sounds awesome. A lot Are of good Christmas? music coming up. Yeah. A little ACDC back. And who doesn't like Dolly Parton? And who doesn't Dolly. like Dolly Parton? Yeah. Got to be good stuff. And who doesn't like this? 81 degrees. Yeah, it's Thursday. nice. You know, the, the only downside, guys, to this weather pattern is that we're not getting rain. I mean, it is beautiful, but we could use a little bit of rain, especially out to the west. Take a look at the drop monitor for the state of Texas. You get out towards Lubbock, uh, Midland, out towards El Paso. Uh, there is quite a bit of drought underway. And we have some here in South Texas as well. Sort of a small area here. But an important area, Uvalde down to Carrizo Springs, it's still in an extreme drought. And that's an area that really could use some good rain. It's just not in the forecast right now. And the yellow color that you see here around Bear County indicates just dry conditions. It's not technically drought. We're just sort of on the brink of drought. And if we don't get any rain, you'll see this spread larger once again like it did over the summer. Uh, let's check in on Medina Lake, too. It's at 51% full. It's been on a steady decline. It's down 25 feet compared to the conservation pool, and it's down 20 feet from where it was one year ago. Uh, if you're heading to the coast this weekend, you know, sometimes we can look to the tropics to maybe give us a little bit of rain. The coast actually looks really nice. Uh, Port Aransas, Rockport, uh, we'll see temperatures in the 80s this weekend. Water temperatures there in the upper 70s. Not a lot of surf. East South usually winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, so a pretty good beach weekend. And let's talk about the tropics. We do have one system down here in the Caribbean that needs to be watched. It's looking a little bit better, maybe a little bit more organized, but it's going to be slow organization here as it moves off to the north. There's about a 70% chance of development over the next five days. And you may say, well, this is moving towards the Gulf of Mexico. Shouldn't we be concerned? Not necessarily. This time of year, we start to get these systems coming through. We start to get fronts, and it usually pushes everything away or destroys the system as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll still watch it, but I don't think we have to be too concerned about it here in Texas. There is another system behind that that uh, may develop. This one's going to be slow to develop as well, probably not until it gets into the Caribbean that we may see some development with it. It's got about a 20% chance, according to the Hurricane Center. Meantime here, we got sunny skies, 81 degrees at the airport, 79 Stinson, 82 Kelly, 80 at Randolph, and winds generally out of the west southwest right now, anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Everybody's jumping into the 80s, 84 degrees comfort, 85 Boulevard, 85 Castroville, 83 right now in Tarpley, and the low 80s out near Del Rio and Carrizo Springs too. Uh, the forecast highs, they're going to be pretty hot, up around 90 here in town, 87 in New Braunfels, 89 Creaso Springs. So another big swing in temperatures today. A lot of that has to do with the dry air. Now we will see dew points come up a little bit, and that's sort of the one change I think we'll see this weekend is that dew points may try to creep into the 60s, and that may provide for some brief morning cloudiness. Other than that, you're not going to notice it all that much, and dew points fall again next week. There's not a lot going on across the country. There are 
just a few showers around Chicago and a few showers trying to drift into parts of the northeast. But other than that, it's a really quiet weather pattern and all that stuff up there is very light. Uh, not much here around Texas and the forecast calls for a weak frontal boundary to work through. Doesn't do a whole lot for our forecast other than maybe cool down those daytime highs a little bit into the mid 80s tomorrow. And then we'll be in the upper 80s both Saturday and Sunday. Another weak front tries to work through Sunday into Monday. Still does not bring any rain for us. So the forecast calls for a high of 90 today. Sunny skies. We'll see winds switch around to the east southeast. I think a little bit later this afternoon. And the extended forecast will start off at 58 tomorrow, 85 on Friday, upper 80s as we mentioned over the weekend, and maybe a little hotter next week. Uh, looking at the extended forecast, still not looking at a lot of rain there, guys. So it's going to be a dry forecast. But a cool one, 60s in the morning, right? Like in the morning, still nice. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Hey, Larry Ramirez talking UTSA football coming up next. USA freshman linebacker Jamal Legan was named Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week thanks to his 19 tackles against Middle Tennessee, a new single game record for the Roadrunners, breaking the old mark by three. His 19 stops is most in an FBS game this season. Pretty cool for a young man making his second collegiate start. It's humbling. It's, um, it's definitely a feat, um, but I don't want to get too caught up in it. And, and as coach says, eat the cheese. Um, uh, I'm more focused on UAB than, than any of the accolades. And I'm just, we're just working on, on, on a game plan and defeating this team. <laughs> Lee Gunn is second on the team with 25 total tackles and tied for second with two and a half sacks. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Green Bay Packers second year linebacker Ty Summers was ready for the challenge Sunday night at the Saints. When starting inside linebacker Christian Kirksey went down with a shoulder injury in the second quarter, Summers, a Reagan grad, was thrown into the fire for his first regular season defensive snap. So what was Ty thinking when he was told to get in the game? It's time to go. You know, it's the stuff we practiced in practice. Um, we've been over this, so it's just, you know, for me, um, I was like, I, I, I didn't feel surprised. I didn't, I didn't feel nervous. Um, I've been looking forward to an opportunity like that my whole life. So um, it was pretty incredible with the opportunity. So for me, I was just like, all right, here's a chance to go show them what I got. Just about to go have fun. Also wore the communications helmet to relay to defensive calls. He finished with a team high nine tackles, and it looks like he'll play Monday against Atlanta with Kirksey's shoulder still hurting. Houston swept Minnesota right out of the wild card round. Yesterday, top seven tied at one, two down. Carlos Correa hits that one deep and gone. 430 feet, a solo shot, and the Astros take the lead for good, two to one. Kyle Tucker went two for four, but two runs batted in, and the Strohs win three to one to sweep the Twins two games to none. And Carlos had some strong words during post I know a lot of people are mad I know a lot of people don't want to see us here but what are they gonna say now you know we're a solid team we play great baseball we want a series on the road in Minnesota so what are they gonna say now they, they had a great year um, you know they were their division champs and you know they played a phenomenal season and you know they deserve to be you know in the wild card race and the playoff race but um you know, we, we always, you know, from the very beginning, envisioned ourselves back in the playoffs and, you know, playing real, real well. What you going to say now? Houston will next face the winner of the A's White Sox in a best of five series starting Monday at Dodger Stadium. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 